Canada is going through a booming renovation phase right now. Last year, we spent over $40 billion on home improvements. But too much of that work is being done by hobbyists who have no business swinging a hammer. It's time to learn from the mistakes of our country's most abysmal builders as they struggle not to be named Canada's worst handyman. Ta-da! The five most pathetic amateur home renovators in the entire country, as nominated by you, have been brought here to this apartment complex so we can determine who is Canada's worst handyman. To make our decision, we're letting each of them renovate an entire one-bedroom suite in just 12 days. This way, we'll get to know who is the worst at woodwork, glasswork, electrical work, and plumbing. Here comes the busted <laughs> I'm Andrew Younghusband. And I'm not a professional renovator. I don't recall duct tape being involved in the lesson. But I do know these tasks can turn a man into a maniac. Well, why don't you get off your ass and go do it? Which is why we have a psychologist on site. To have a glorious failure mm. is some strange way it went to. This isn't going to be one of those nice and pretty home renovation shows where everything works out perfectly. Oh, no. This is Canada's worst handyman. To find the most inept handyman between Newfoundland and B.C., we put out a nationwide call for nominees. After sifting through the rubble, we were left with these five candidates, all desperate to avoid being nailed with the embarrassing title of Canada's worst handyman. Barry is a substitute teacher from Quadra Island, B.C. His laid-back approach to power tools has his neighbor, Scott, worried about his safety. I don't believe I was born with uh, handyman skills. Probably my DNA was twisted in a different way. Then there's Merle from Sucker Creek, Alberta. On top, I have a 32-inch opening. Down here, I have a 30-inch opening. This truck driver doesn't own a measuring tape, so he often ends up a little short. I'm not much of a measuring type of guy. It takes too long. Merle was nominated as Canada's worst handyman by his frustrated wife, Shelley. Jeannie's next. She bought an unfinished house in Victoria, B.C., then realized she doesn't have the skills needed to fix it up. I'm bleeding. <laughs> I don't know how I got to be. The only female contender for Canada's worst handyman was put forward by her buddy, Lawrence. The next nominee is Keith, a performance artist from downtown Toronto. He has ambition, but the only tool Keith knows how to use is a broom. And when people are doing something like, you know, at their house or wherever, like, I don't want to be the one always sweeping the floor. Keith was brought to us by his handy friend, David. And the final nominee for Canada's worst handyman is Daryl, who left the big city to live a more rustic life. That looks like Daryl's wife, Sarah, wants things done in their new house, but not by Daryl. Swings in my hand for a few minutes, and uh, Sarah will come and take it away from me. For their own good, we've brought these broken renovators here to the Handyman Rehabilitation Center, a thoroughly dilapidated apartment complex. Over the course of six episodes, we will watch these people navigate their way through the knuckle-busting world of home improvement. So, you actually showed up. Very good. Seriously, though, welcome to the Handyman Rehabilitation Center. You're going to be spending the next 12 days here turning some gutted apartments into some very nice, livable homes. We're going to drill basic information into their heads through repetition and constant explanation. Fixing an entire living space is no easy task. Luckily, Canada's worst handyman are tough people. Oh, my God! To those of you who are nominated as Canada's worst handyman, I do just want to say... I know it took a lot of courage to show up here, and thank you. But I want to say that you represent a very large group of Canadians, people who have shopping carts full of home improvement ambition, but no skill. So, if things go horribly wrong for you while you're here, just remember there are home renovators from coast to coast who are with you. All right? So, want to see what you're up against? The nominees for Canada's Worst Handyman have such bad building habits their safety is constantly at risk 
and that concerns us more than anything. So, before anyone goes inside, we're handing out all new protective gear. In order to overcome their bad habits, these people have to break through a lot of barriers, including the front door to the rehab center. They're giving him a big hammer. Keith said he didn't want to be the guy sweeping up anymore. So, I gave him the sledgehammer. But a good handyman could do more damage with a broom. Merle, the most impatient nominee, has seen enough. When I said these apartments were dilapidated... Oh my God, Daryl, you're going to have so much trouble. I wasn't kidding. Holy... Oh my... I couldn't be more depressing, really. Canada's worst handymen have their work cut out for them. Fixing these apartments involves 25 individual projects. You don't know how to do any of this. The candidates will learn about structural integrity, basic water flow, and decorative paint. We will learn who is Canada's worst handyman. When class begins tomorrow... Where's Daryl? Daryl is late. Attention. Welcome back to Canada's Worst Handyman. We've brought the five most unskilled amateur home renovators in the entire country here to this apartment building to give them a crash course in basic construction and design. They each will get their own dilapidated one-bedroom suite. Now it's up to them to make it sweet. Okay, class, here we go. I want to introduce you to the two people that are going to be helping you through all of these challenges. Greg House, our head instructor, is a general contractor. Fixing bad work for the last four decades has given him a temper as sharp as his chisel. All I asked you to do was seat a couple of screws and a piece of drywall. Just do it the way you told to do it. Beside Greg is Robin Lockhart, owner of a trendy Toronto design firm that creates home and business environments from the ground up. It is the finessing of the jobs that you're missing. I'm going to hammer on you for it. I'm going to keep hammering it. Together, these two perfectionists will teach classes monitor every project on closed circuit television and ultimately help choose who is Canada's worst handyman. Your first challenge here at the Handyman Rehab Center is patching the hole in your ceiling, okay? Where's Daryl? Uh, marital problem, marital problems, marital problems. Greg, take it away. Right. Okay. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. Patching a hole is an annoying thing. Every hole is different. First thing you want to do is you want to get some, some patches. Well... <laughs> I didn't want to miss the class. Yes. Well, the attention. We want to get a piece of drywall up in here so that we can patch it, right? And you will do that with a shim or a piece of wood. And you will cut it whatever size you can fit in there so that it sits across. And you will get up there with a screw through the wall, boom, through into there to hold it. The reason Greg wants people to screw a length of wood to the inside of their hole is so the piece of drywall can then be screwed securely to that piece of wood. Once those two simple steps are done, a light coat of plaster ends this phase of the job. It sounds complicated in your way. Greg's way is not complicated. It's correct. Remember now, Barry teaches elementary school. Well, I don't remember all the stuff he told us about that because I wasn't listening. I don't know how this works. Daryl was late for class this morning because his wife, Sarah, was having trouble with her bad back. Now, Daryl's having as much trouble with gossip as he is with this ladder. When Daryl showed up late this morning, I wasn't really surprised because, well, we're all in the same hotel and we did hear a lot of yelling coming from their room. We don't really know how bad her back is, so it's hard to really predict because she can get a good move on when it's lunch. Oh, no, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I'm going to drill into it. And then I'm going to cover it with the, hole, with the sheet rock. Keith has never patched a hole in his life, there. but he's determined to do this one perfectly. Good luck. I can do it. <laughs> one, two, three, go. While Jeannie uses her homemade toolbox as a sawhorse, Keith uses his radiator, which is downright sensible compared to what Barry's doing. He's merely sawing away on top of his fully connected propane stove. Safety is not Barry's middle name. Good thing you didn't hit the propane line. <laughs> it's a good thing. Yeah, I'm sure it's off. When it comes to do-it-yourself projects, I feel like I am creative, but I really don't know what I'm doing mechanically. 
Most of the time, nothing turns out right, and I hurt myself. Being a good handyman means being careful. At home on Quadra Island, Barry is rarely careful. So you're using the crowbar? No, I'm not going to use the crowbar. I have to go get another tool, so I'll be back in a second. He's a danger to himself and probably others if they're anywhere near him when he's working with power tools. The Closet Chainsaw Massacre. Sadly, this isn't even close to the most dangerous thing Barry's ever done to improve his home. Get a load of this electrifying story. I was sitting in a pool of water trying to fix my dryer with it plugged in, and uh, <laughs> the 220 just blew my hands back and my head back, and I crumpled down and started crying, and that's probably what's wrong with me. 220 volts of electricity is enough to kill a wet man. Barry may now be the most burnt-out handyman in the Gulf Islands, but is he Canada's worst? I am not Canada's worst handyman. At the rehab center, Barry's already cutting corners and taking chances. I don't want to do that shimmy thing. He asked you to do a shimmy and you're saying, screw that. That's right, I'm not going to listen. Merle doesn't want to use his shim either. And he's refusing to use the new measuring tape we gave him. It's too complicated. He starts off by measuring the hole with his hand. Then he measures with his eyes. Then he shoves his entire piece of jib rock at it. When it's almost cut down to size, Merle decides to jam his piece of drywall in place. Merle's got a piece cut. Will it fit? Okay. Will it fit? At home in Sucker Creek, Merle has beaten many projects into submission. If you want something done, just do it. <laughs> you don't need a plan. This step here, it took Merle 26 minutes to do it. <laughs> I can't see a problem. It works. And if it works, you're happy. Or I'm happy. He's happy. Nobody else is happy. <laughs> this is another project I did. It's a dog house for my dog. Come on, go in. Look, it's nice. Go check. Go. In here. Come on. Bye. My measuring and leveling skills is pretty simple. If both eyes are working, and it should be level. And if my arm's long enough to measure it, I'll use my arm. So, Dad, when's my room going to be finished? Unfortunately, Merle's arms weren't long enough to measure his daughter's bedroom. And I did not use a measuring tape, and that gave me a real big gap at the end. I don't know how I'm gonna fix it. Hopefully he won't try fixing it with duct tape. I like duct tape because it's strong. And you can use it anywhere. It's handy. Voila, it's fixed. Drywall tape. Drywall tape is thin, sticky mesh designed to give wet plaster something to cling to as it hardens. It's only strong enough to support a few grams per square centimeter. But Merle is optimistically using it to make a safety net to catch the globs of plaster he knows are going to fall from his ceiling patch. If Merle had used a shim to install that piece of drywall, it would be flush with the ceiling right now and wouldn't need this nonsense. Bingo. Uh, can, I, can I make a suggestion? Can you put your safety goggles on, do you think? At his hole, Daryl is hearing more advice from his wife than he claims to have heard in the classroom. Jeannie, she just talked the whole time. I couldn't even hear half of it. So tell her to shut up. Jeannie just goes on and on and on. Just one question. Oh, you have to sand it first? Part of it over and part of it to the side. No problem. Eh? That's right. Girls. Don't you need a ladder? What is that one, the last one that you used? So why would we use it? You make your hole bigger. You've already got a big enough hole. <laughs> You may need to hand me some nails or something. Jeannie has two shims through her hole, and she's determined to hammer them in place instead of drilling them. These are screws. We only provided screws, so a hammer simply won't work. But that doesn't stop Jeannie. She pointlessly bangs away on the screws, even though in class she was specifically told to use the drill. Lead up there with a the screw through the wall. Boom. I'm Jeannie McCulloch. I live in Victoria and I've been nominated by my friend, question mark, Lawrence. <laughs> Jeannie is indecisive and uh, she bumbles her way through things. This is Jeannie's mostly finished home in Victoria. Today, she's installing new kitchen blinds. We have a manual. We have included in package two mounting brackets, which are not drawn correctly. Oh, gosh. Why do they make it so complicated? 
Jeannie measured her kitchen window and then had these blinds made to her exact specifications. It's too narrow. And we can't take it back because this is custom made. I'm not Canada's worst handyman. I can achieve some stuff. I'm creative. Well, there's a hole here and I didn't know how to fix it. So I put this soap dish there and look how beautifully that fits. She needs help. It's like a puzzle. You have to make the pieces fit. But you're not, it's impossible to do that. Back at the rehab center, Keith has given up on perfection. Oh my God, you are useless. You are totally useless. Oh and he almost gives up completely. Well, now it's Merle thinks he can make plaster without reading the instructions. It looks like enough. He uses far too much water. Hey, that guy gave us a stick. And doesn't even realize. I'll use it so he doesn't get mad. Plaster should be the consistency of peanut butter. Yes. Merle's is more like gravy. Come on. Come on, stay on, buddy. Work with me. <laughs> Merle's desperate concoction is too much for his safety net to bear. <gasps> Instead of cleaning off his drill, Merle steals some old duct tape left on his ceiling by our lighting crew. He thinks that because our experts and I aren't in the room, we have no idea what he's doing. He's wrong. <laughs> what do they think that they're hiding from us? There's 12 cameras on this shoot. Look, there's one now, for example, for God's sake. We know all this. Look, there's Chris. He's got a camera. Everybody's got a damn camera. With 12 cameras constantly rolling, our experts get to watch every bad move their students make. And when the experts see something totally egregious, I'm sent in to investigate. So, Merle, how's it going? We <laughs> just got caught. I think you just caught me. <laughs> how's it going, man? So far, no good. But I found some help, so... When we come back, Daryl and Sarah hit a rough patch. If you make me bend down one more time, I'm going to freak out. The country's five most clueless handymen, as nominated by you, have been brought here to our rehab center, where we're giving them each a ruined apartment and all the tools they need to fix it. Their first job is to patch a hole in the ceiling. All this job needs is a wooden shim, three screws, a piece of drywall, and a smear of plaster. But so far, the candidates for Canada's worst handyman are making the problem larger than it really is. Making the hole bigger. I know I am. We're providing expert guidance, but they've got their own ideas. It's easier to trim this than that. No. no. I just... So what's going to hold that up there, Barry? Scott. Scott, Scott, you're going to hold it up? You're the pillar for the... I'll just stand there. Barry, for whatever reason, decided not to listen at all to the professional. He, he had no idea how to do anything. Shut up and stand. I know. Daryl didn't listen either. Now, he's trying to hammer in screws. Why do you always hammer screws? A turn screw will bite into the plaster with its threads. A hammered screw will be useless. When Daryl finally picks up the drill, he doesn't realize it's in reverse. Something's not right. Daryl was late for class this morning because his wife's back was acting up. Now, her temper's acting up. It was to show you never be late for you class. You know, I can't take it anymore, all right? One thing at a time. Handyman projects often lead to marital breakdowns. Worried that just such problems would ensue here, we've enlisted the help of psychologist Dr. Julie Hill. So tell us a little bit about your take on his do-it-yourself skills. Oh, Daryl doesn't have any skills at all. I, I don't have to be great. I would just like to be capable. I, I'd like to uh, be able to, you know, do a little bit more than change a light bulb. If you asked Daryl, he'd probably say that I'm explosive. If you make me bend down one more time, I'm going to freak out. I don't think that's a bad thing. You know, even though she'd be negative, maybe, or vocal. Holy I'm so sick of this. His father's very handy, and his uncle's very handy. Even I'm handier than Daryl. How's the mix coming? Not so good. Not so good? Don't worry about it. And, and the three of us tease him. And why do you do that? Oh, well, this is fun. <laughs> For who? Well, well, I think he thinks it's fun. <laughs> you need to, like, relax. Yeah. To start a happier, more hands-on life, 
Daryl and Sarah recently moved from downtown Toronto to Warkworth, Ontario, where being handy is a way of life. In the city, we didn't have to uh, really worry about Daryl doing anything because we could just call someone. I, it took a while to, to, to buy some tools and give up the phone. All the tools, see, I don't know any of these tools are in here. He went out and he bought himself an outfit. <laughs> he thought that looking the part would make him if better. You look, look, if you look the part, you can become the part. I'm going to attempt to hang these mirrors and these two wall sconces. Home renovation is more than a struggle for Daryl. Oh, are you hanging the mirrors? It's a fight. You're gonna kill me in my sleep, honest to God. You know, there's, there's always a winner in the fight, and it's always me, because I am right. I read the instructions, I'm right. If you only read instructions once in your life, please let it be now. Well, these are very hard instructions to read. They're pictures. I try to avoid at all costs doing any project in front of Sarah because it just leads to a fight. Don't be an idiot. For Daryl to not win Canada's Worst Handyman, I think everyone else would have to pull out. So what do you think? I think it looks stupid. I'm just wondering what you think now. Having There's no doctor-patient oh, confidentiality in this office. When Daryl and Sarah leave, I get the clinical evaluation. Uh, I see a man who is having a self-esteem crisis right now. He is very vulnerable and he's very fragile right now. He, he came here expecting to fail. He's almost planning on failing because he's so raw right now. Okay. I just don't know if that's right. Sarah's not Daryl's only nagging problem. He never did get a shim screwed into his hole. So now his ceiling patch is levitating high above where it should be. Maybe if he waves a magic wand. Merle's duct tape isn't working either. <laughs> but I don't recall duct tape being involved in the lesson. Yeah, well, if I could hide it. Odds are better about the zero, but <laughs> ever plastered over duct tape before? Not this big. Not that big, but smaller. Smaller? Seems to work. Watching from the control room, our experts are speechless. In Jeannie's room, she's removing her shims because she can't get them drilled into place. And in Keith's room, the drill and shims are also being left out. Okay, let's get that polyfill out. Yeah, but don't you gotta screw it on or something? I'm not going to. No? Okay. The last time Keith needed to use plaster in his apartment, he used toothpaste, the sparkly kind. I use toothpaste here because somebody once told me that if you make a mistake, you just fill it in with toothpaste. I just use the wrong toothpaste, that's all. I don't know what tools are. Like, if, if somebody gave me a tool, I don't know what these things do. These are horizontal blinds, and I've never taken them up or down, like any of them, because I don't know how to do it. When I encounter something that needs to be uh, fixed in my apartment, I usually ask my friend David. There you go. And when he's doing them, you're trying to explain what needs to be done. He looks at you like when you talk to a dog, and they sort of angle their head a little bit. And you think it understands what you're saying, <laughs> and it's paying attention, but then it's just, no. I can hear you, but I don't listen. I'm not even listening now. <laughs> At the rehab center, Barry is using Scott to hold his patch in place. Our expert, Greg, is not impressed. Uh, how come I don't see any screws up there holding it? Oh, I couldn't remember what you said. Really? In a final show of defiance, Barry uses his shim to prop up the drywall patch. Done. Get out of here. Good luck. I know I impress that guy. Cool and calm. Jeannie has managed to wedge her patch into place. Now, she's covering it with enough plaster to do the job ten times over. But whoops. No, wait a minute. Why is that always showing up like that? And when I sand it, it's going to get worse. To get his plaster smoothed on, Keith uses 214 strokes of the palette. Enough already. Seems to be working. Merle doesn't like it when I point out the limitations of duct tape. I'll stop. With the first phase of this plastering project done, the new neighbors sniff around each other's holes to see who amongst them is the best and who is Canada's worst handyman. Oh, did you get that tape in your box? No, I stole it. Merle, what did, what did you do to the drill, Merle? Drill. What did you do to that? <laughs> must have dropped some drywall. You must have dropped some drywall. Look out below. What's up? Canada's worst handyman are moving up the ladder to shingles. You got to make them too. No, that's backwards. Canada's worst handymen have taken their first steps at rehabilitation by starting to renovate their individual apartments. 
Now, it's time to see how they work as a team. They're heading out back to the tool shed, where they will be shingling the roof. We've provided all the materials and supplies needed, and the instructions are printed right on the shingle packages. Should be simple. Welcome, everyone. Welcome back to the tool shed. You've been here before, and you're going to see a lot of this during your time here. Uh, obviously, this sucker ain't done. And your first task is to shingle this bad boy. Okay? We've got roofing nails. We've got shingling. We've got hammers. First of all, I should just tell you that while you're out here, you guys are working as a team. All right? Inside, it's all about you as individuals. Out here, organization, communication. If you don't work together, you're not going to make your, your task. Okay? The only thing I will ask of you is... Two people on the roof, maximum one time. Okay. It's easy. It's shingling. No, but I know what to do. As long as you start. The you right haven't direction. done it, but you know what to do. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. You got an hour and a half to do it. According to the instructions, you start this job by nailing down a row of shingles or a course of shingles draped over the outside edge. Then you nail another course right on top to fill the gaps. After that, it's just a matter of continuing up to the peak, staggering the courses like brickwork. To get Canada's worst handyman started, we stapled down tar paper, the first step in waterproofing a roof. The next step should be choosing a leader. That doesn't happen. There's no team meeting and no agenda. The job site is instant chaos. What's up? You don't even know what you're doing. You know how to do this, don't you? Yeah, just go like that. We gotta follow the line. It goes the other way. No, that's backwards. I don't think so. While the handyman tried to deduce which way isn't backwards, their nominators tell embarrassing stories about them. Is he afraid of heights? Yeah, he's he? afraid of heights. Oh, yeah. Before they start nailing the shingles down, Jeannie wants to read the instructions. Do you want the instructions up there? But in a collective show of backwards thinking, the men would rather just continue on. See, you kind of pull that down. Merle seems pretty certain he knows what he's doing. I mean, listen, look at... Like that. Are you, are you hearing what we're saying? You know what? Yeah, but you're saying too much. You're getting me confused. I've never seen him with a hammer where he didn't either hurt himself or someone else. Is Keith going to make it onto the roof, do you think? He doesn't seem to get the idea that those shingles have to go on the roof. The team is attacking this job from every conceivable angle, including upside down. And I'll move the ladder. It'll be easier. Barry has handed this shingle correctly, but he flips it over before hammering it on. Dagger it again, right? He's flipping them all over. You got them on upside down, boys. That doesn't look so good. According to our building expert, Greg, there's only one thing to do in this situation. Rip the shingles up and start again. On the other side of the roof, things are moving along quickly and incorrectly. What they didn't do was lay their first course. So you lay the first course, and then you're supposed to lay a second course right on top of the first course so you don't get this gap. Have you missed any spots? Instead of doing what he knows is right, Merle comes up with a slapdash solution that will only take 10 seconds. The worst part is, he's teaching Jeannie his bad habits. Yeah. It's less than shoddy. Some of Merle's patches aren't even nailed down. One good gust of wind. Those, roofs, those are gone. I want to go up there. When we started this project, we explained that for safety reasons, only two people could be on this small roof. And since Barry is an elementary school teacher, we expected him to follow the instructions. Oh, it looks different from up here. You know, we need some shingles. Down. Safety first, everyone. Two people on the roof only. Now there's four of them. And there they are. I'm just wasting my time down below standing around. It is time. If you're telling me this roof isn't safe, we didn't build it, so it's got to be safe. They won't crash through it. We're worried they might knock each other off it. Okay, so what they've done here is they have gone up, and you can see in actual air pockets where air can kind of get up. You can see it almost doing like a zipper kind of effect, That's right? That's because they're shingling in chunky sections instead of complete courses. Before crawling up the ladder, Keith was reading the instructions on how to shingle something called the valley. But this roof doesn't have a valley. It has a peak. He read the wrong instructions. Hey, Jeannie. Yeah? We're almost at the top, which is called the valley. How do we do that? Jeannie consults the paperwork. The valley instructions. OK, shingles in the valley. Good handiwork requires common sense. Cut off top corner of each end shingle at an angle. And an understanding of English. That's not a valley. That's a peak. A peak is a peak, and a valley is a valley. Hey, Keith, where did you come to learn that the peak is called a valley? 
I was looking at Barry's crack in his ass. Yeah, that's a valley. That's a valley, Keith. This is a peak. The tool shed roof is peaking like a bad hallucination. I think it's fine. I think we did it. It's not fine. It's an abomination that will leak like a sieve and blow off within a year. They've got exposed seams, open gaps, and a peak that's beyond repair. Not to mention the safety issues. When we say two on a roof, we mean two on a roof. I've seen three guys on my neighbor's roof. Four guys. Okay, I'm going to say it again, Barry. When we say two on a roof, we mean two on a roof. All right. When it comes to incompetence, Canada's worst handymen are bottomless. <laughs> the candidates for Canada's worst handyman aren't the sharpest tools in the box. You can tell by how cavalierly they treat their own tools at home. Merle stores his in a cardboard box. Jeannie uses plastic filing cabinets, and Keith's container is the suitcase from an old Fisher-Price record player. That's no good. So, before coming to the Handyman Rehab Center, we had Canada's worst handyman make a brand new toolbox based on this simple diagram. My gosh, there's not even any instructions. When professional Greg House sees the drawing, he immediately knows what he has to do. Cut a bottom, two equal ends, and two equal sides. Then, pop in a handle, screw it together, and he's done. There it is. Simple, sturdy. So look at it again. Here. I know. It's like a box with a handle in the middle. So next thing we're going to try to figure out the measurements. There's an old carpenter's adage that goes, measure twice, cut once. Merle doesn't subscribe to that school of thought. He prefers to measure never and cut often. That looks good. You yeah. think I'm going to use my saw? Which saw? The bad one. Barry doesn't just need a new toolbox. He needs new tools. That's like a hot knife for your soft butt. We provided jigsaws for this project. Keith has never used one before. Can you tell? Merle should be using his jigsaw to cut out the toolbox handle, but he doesn't have time for that. Okay, see? Oh, go to work. He also doesn't have time for the screws or glue we provided. Duct tape's easy to work with, and it's strong and... Never lets you down. No, I could throw my box away. <laughs> Daryl's still hammering his wood screws. To cut out the handle with a jigsaw, first you need to drill a hole so the saw blade has a place to start. Barry does this, but he can't get his saw blade through the hole, which is better than Jeannie. She's hoping the blade will magically punch its way through the plywood. When we first saw the plans for the toolbox, I actually thought for just a moment that you could actually put together a box. Home handiwork is popular because Canadians are a proud people. Well, uh, duct tape. We like to show off our fine craftsmanship. It's not like the greatest, but I mean, it's with some sanding down. <laughs> our attention to detail. And our ability to make something beautiful, yet functional. For their next job, Canada's worst handymen will paint a mural they can live with on their living room wall. To teach the importance of planning, we're only allowing each person to select seven items, and our store has a strict no-return policy. For his mural, Barry casually takes wood glue, but no paintbrush. I don't have a paintbrush. Wasn't very smart, was it? <laughs> on the other hand, Merle chooses multiple paintbrushes, but almost forgets paint. Good luck to you, Merle. Yeah, uh -oh, one color of paint, yeah. Oh, that's it? You have three colors? Brown, yellow, and green? You're going to do a mural with no paintbrush. We told our students early this morning they'd be painting a mural, but Jeannie's the only one who did the right thing by drawing out a plan. 
Merle has a plan, but it's so simple, it doesn't need a sketch. Much to our designer's dismay. Have you got a master plan here? Kind of. I'm drawing a bunny. A bunny? Robin retreats to the control room, while Scott sneaks to the supply room, stealing paintbrushes for Barry. What? What are you, <laughs> what are you talking about? Buddy, give it, give it, give it. glue. I saw him take glue. glue, but no paintbrush. Robin is shell-shocked. Bunnies should get planned out before being painted on. Waves too. That's at at least times. Sarah and Daryl, you can see that they're they're planning. <laughs> they you know, they're, plan. they're putting in a lot of forethought. Yeah. And they're they're going to make yeah. this work. I think they're just going to turn out really well. You sound like you're already stressing. Why? We have not much time. You know what, Daryl? I don't think I can work with you if you're going to be all crabby. Merle is a veteran wildlife artist. At home, one of his unfinished murals could eat this bunny for breakfast. Ooh, I like eagles. Eagles are nice. Merle knows that crafty painters often dapple wet paint with a sponge. But he doesn't have a sponge, so drywall tape does the job. Daryl's opening up another can of worms. Are you okay there? Sounds really... Daryl, you're demolishing that paint can. I know, it's like not coming up. Those because you're not up. doing it right. Oh. Now you probably jammed it all. Now it comes. <laughs> Watch out. When the paint finally gets open, Daryl's work is apparently done. I haven't seen Daryl pick up a paintbrush yet. No. Sarah seems to be Sarah doing seems all the painting. seems to be doing the painting. He's doing the mixing. Her back doesn't seem to be bothering her. How much have you painted? New rules. Daryl has to finish the mural himself. Sarah's only job is to offer encouragement and support. Okay, that looks really You're missing a lot of spots. Now, I got no idea what Keith is up to. How's it going? <laughs> Talk us through it, Keith. What are we making here? I'm making an emotion wheel. What's happening with Keith? I don't understand. It's totally off the wall. This challenge is 15 minutes old. What's I Merle doing? Is Merle out back having a smoke now? Did he finish in the he, first five Merle's minutes? Or? Much done. How's it going? <laughs> <laughs> Job's done, then you've got time to do something else. Canada's worst handymen step back and admire their decorative work. I'm just going to go out and come in again. I'm going to close my eyes and I'm going to come in again. Mm -hmm. Only Jeannie's mural draws any depth into the living room. Jeannie achieved this by creating a smart sketch and transferring it to the wall using colors that complement her room's yellow base. Who is Canada's worst handyman so far? We're about to find out. And the worst for this episode is... Canada's five worst home renovators have each patched a hole, painted a mural, and helped shingle a roof here at the Handyman Rehabilitation Centre. Now it's time for each of them to face their judgment from the experts. At the end of every show, our professionals will assess the students' work and choose who is the most improved and who is the worst. For this episode, we're bringing the psychologist along, just in case. We start with Merle. Oh my God! After blasting his way through the front door, Merle got straight to work without a measuring tape, without a plan, and without realizing the plaster won't stick to duct tape. Now, you're going to have to sand that, right? All that duct tape's going to come off, and that, whole, that piece of drywall is going to fall out because there's nothing holding it. His mural went well, but it's ruffling some feathers. Oh, my God. I hope he doesn't do that in his house. This, this is supposed to be in your living room. Who? puts a Playboy bunny in their living room. I'm the handyman, and that's my apartment, and I'll make it the way I want. On to Keith. Oh, oh my God! I think today, I, was, um, I handled everything really well. To put up his piece of drywall, Keith used his plaster as if it were glue. But eventually, this all has to be sanded away, mm -hmm. taking away your structure, which is really holding it up. And his so-called emotional wheel only puts fear into the heart of our designer. I think, I think if I walked in and saw this, I would probably um, curl, curl up in the fetal position and have myself a little cry. Oh, I can only go up from here. I can't possibly go any lower. Next, we go to the purple room, where Daryl has been working under fairly stressful conditions. Why do you keep wearing that shirt? I do appreciate that it, it's tidy compared to everything else that we've seen. At least I, I find this the most workable. Perhaps Daryl's problem isn't his ability, it's his support team. I, I mean, I'm just mortified today. 
I think she's going to derive real pleasure by seeing me fail, actually. Jeannie's next. She likes instructions, but not enough to follow them. On the plastering project, she didn't screw a shim into the ceiling like Greg told her to. You have screwed, you have screwed this. No one did, and it's starting to drive him crazy. It got screwed. Yeah. What do you mean, yeah? So what you're telling me is this is not screwed. They are out to get me. <laughs> Big time. Barry's next. It sounds complicated in your way. I just had trouble listening, so I just did my own thing. Our psychologist thinks Barry intentionally did a substandard mural so he wouldn't have to try. Our designer thinks he's just careless. Barry, I'm a little concerned that we're doing the painting exercise and yet you forgot to pick up a paintbrush. But what really annoys our building expert, Greg, isn't Barry's finger painting, it's his disregard for overhead safety issues. Done. It's not safe. You didn't expect about, me to do it it's exactly about, like you wanted me to do it. I, that's what I expected. Never would have That's absolutely what I expected. <laughs> Just do it Your the way you're told to do it. Your expectations are too high. With final inspections over, it's time for the experts and I to compare notes. So, <laughs> hell of a first day here at the Handyman Rehab Center. <sighs> a lot of shoddy workmanship, a lot of old behavior, and uh, a lot of excuse mongering. Just the sheer level of it is, is very surprising to me. We have to right now come up with who's the most improved here and who's the worst. If I have to choose the least ideal, I would say Barry. I think Keith is an absolute train wreck. Daryl had a really good attitude. Attitude. He, well, he didn't have a whole lot of skill. He made mistakes, but he went back and tried to make right. So let's talk a little bit about Merle. What did you think about Merle's work? He doesn't necessarily take a lot of pride in his work. Like, I think he just, he has an idea, he executes it as far as he wants to, I think, and then he loses interest. I was also impressed with uh, both Jeannie and Keith in terms of that they had actually listened and tried to implement the information. During this six-part series, none of Canada's worst handymen will go home. But when the worst for each episode is named, he or she will get to visit the darkened tool shed for one extra lesson. So, we've come to the end of our first episode here at the Handyman Rehabilitation Centre, and it's become pretty clear that all of you have one big problem as renovators, and that is, that you people don't listen. That's the big issue here. Daryl, when we say show up for class at 9am, please, be here at 9am, alright? Merle, when a pro contractor tells you duct tape doesn't really have a role in a plastering project, <laughs> you don't want to rip used duct tape off the ceiling and it's just not going to fly. And Jeannie, listen, you know if I say please, shh, be quiet. It's not your cue to keep on. Shh, listen, okay? So at the end of every episode here, we're going to name the most improved for this particular episode and we're going to name the worst for this particular episode. The most improved for each episode will get two things. This handy dandy tool belt for one show. And with that comes a little bit of political clout, okay? Whoever wears this will actually get to be the foreman of the yard work team. We saw you guys out there today without a foreman. <laughs> Not pretty. <laughs> so we decide you need a leader. And the most improved for this week is Daryl. Congratulations. Very good. Very good. And now for the bad news. Someone is the worst for this episode. The worst also gets two things. Public humiliation and an extra lesson. And the worst for this episode is... <laughs> Barry. Barry didn't follow instructions on the plastering job. He shingled upside down. That doesn't look so good. And he finger painted like a four-year-old. He needs to start listening. To find out that Barry was sort of... You know, the loser of the losers, well, that's no surprise. I deserved it. I did a lot of stupid things. Looking good, Bear. You got that hammer. I don't know. Oh, you're going to have this hammer in one sec because, my friend, you're about to hang your head in shame. How's that? Looks good to me. Come on, let's go in for your final lesson. All right. And this lesson, Barry, is a lesson in straightforward listening, okay? All right. Listen to me now. I'm listening. Cut a board 21 and 7 eighths of an inch long. So this is crooked on the sand. You want me to measure? How do you measure something straight from that? Okay, remember this. I said, what did I say? I said, you listen to me. And I said, cut a board 21 and 7 eighths of an inch long. Yeah. Okay, listen to me, Barry. Cut a board. A board, Barry. A board? A board. Yes, this is an exercise oh. in listening. Listen, listen. Oh, one of those. Yes, a board, Barry. 27 and what? Oh, man, 21 and 7 eighths. Listen. Listen. 
on the next episode of Canada's Worst Handyman. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. We focus on the bathroom. Oh, that's looking nasty. And decorum goes down the toilet. Get off your ass and go do it. I didn't call her a 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 Hello? Don't be a Just get out. What? You know what? You know what? Yeah. Whatever.